Hello, everyone. Welcome to Live at Five. It's April 26th. The last show of the season is opening, and it's Take Your Kids to Work Day. I'm just saying. Hello. I'm Beth Stevens. Hi, I'm Paul Wontorek. That was a lot of information. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for you. And we are here in the studio with social media maven, Caitlin Gallup. Ooh, I love that upgrade title. <laughs> I'm title. into it. Hey, Caitlin. And who's uh, here? One of my favorite people's here. One of your favorite yes, people? Yes, yes. Like, on one hand, he's one of your favorite One five. of them. <laughs> Zachary Pizer's here from Sweeney Todd. Yes! Off-Broadway smash Ooh, hit revival. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But first, we have our top five. All right, the first thing that came out this morning was we got drama desk nominations. Okay, so as you know, everyone, it's yes. award season. Mm -hmm. It's in full so, swing. So, of course, there are all these pre-Tony awards. We're going to call them that. Okay, we can call them sure. that. <laughs> so the Outer Critics nominations came out two days ago, and today the Drama Desk nominations came out. And um, before we get into it, I just want to say we're not going to talk snubs. Mm, okay. I don't do snubs yet. All right. These are the preliminary awards. I'm with you. When the Tony nominations come out on we're Tuesday and they're shady, that's when we talk snubs. <laughs> Okay. This is and the Drama Desk Awards also is a blend of Broadway and off Which Broadway, is a little confusing. so it gets very confusing. Yeah. And the categories are different. But having said that, uh, congratulations to Carousel, which received twelve nominations, That's a lot. making it the most nominated show of the year. So far. Um, following right behind is SpongeBob SquarePants with eleven nominations, Mean Girls with ten, and Harry Potter with eight. But we're not talking about the snubs because there were some weird things. So just look at the there list was yourself. Some weird things, yeah. I'm, not, I'm trying to keep it positive, Beth. I just want to say some things say. were not eligible because they opened last year, like the band's visit, for example. That one. But there's other but things I forgot. But that's not a snub. That just wasn't eligible. That's not a snub. Correct. Um, but the other thing I want to say is Saturday, yes. you, you're all going to log on to Broadway.com and vote for nominations for the Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards you because those nominated. are your awards. That's right. So this is what these people think, but then you get to pick. These people. So right. then you can nominate your own. That's that's exciting. So I just want to let everyone know, do that starting Saturday. Cool. Yeah, anyway, Yay, that's Saturday. It. But yeah, the drama desk, yay, carousel. <laughs> All right, we also found out who is going to be hosting the Jimmy Awards this year. The Jimmy Awards, so the Jimmy Awards. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Thank you. And I just want to say Sachin is with us today. He played Jimmy in high school. Um, the Jimmys honor the best in high school musical theater. And their host, he's blushing over there. The host is Tony winner, Laura Benanti. So good that's choice. exciting. Good choice. Good choice. She's, she's a good host. 10th annual, by the way, Jimmy Awards. Uh, June 25th, 7.30 p.m. at the Minskoff Theater on the Broadway. Exciting. And this is for high school talents. Even Obazada. No, I'm just that. saying. But yeah. even Obazada famously performed there. Correct, Miss Saigon. And got noticed for Miss Saigon. So yeah, she didn't on. win the Jimmys. No. Nope. So it's not about winning the Jimmys. It's just about singing at the Jimmys. It's about being there. Being there. All right, and you are going to be very excited because our Day in the Life feature with Matt Murphy and our amazing team here is back. Yeah. So Lisa Howard, who love is, Lisa Howard, who was here not long ago, yeah. talking about her role in Escape to Margaritaville. Um, by the way, uh, side note, Jimmy Buffett was here, and that'll be on tomorrow's Broadway.com show. And you wore a special shirt. I, I wore floral <laughs> for Jimmy Buffett. You gotta. Um, so, that, so anyway, but Lisa Howard is fantastic in the show, and we do this feature where Matthew Murphy follows people around and does beautiful portraits throughout their day. And then Alexander Goyko, one of our uh, super video talents here, turns it into a feature film. <laughs> so make sure... But not as long, basically. Make sure you check out the photos and check out the video. It's fantastic. Yeah. There's this whole moment where she's shopping for groceries. That's my favorite. Um, <laughs> but we got some amazing St. Joan coverage from the opening last night. Right. So St. Joan opened last you night. You watched on opening night. I went to opening night. I don't often do that. Very exciting. Very, very fancy. <laughs> um, yeah, so Condola Rashad was there. Her mother was there, Felicia Rashad. Her aunt was there, or aunt, Felicia if you're Rashad from Rashad is indirectly in the news today, but we'll keep going. Indirectly. Uh, Debbie Allen was there. Oh. Vivian Ayers Allen was there. Yeah, that whole family. Her grandmother and Ahmad talent Rashad. Family. The whole talent family was there cheering on Cadola Rashad as Joan of Arc. It was great. It was great. So we have a lot of photos and we have a red carpet challenge coming up soon and good stuff. Good stuff. Do you know what the red carpet challenge was? I do. Oh, can you want to share? Do you want to tease it? <laughs> All right. It was Famous Jones. It was Joan Parade. Oh, that's right. Like that's Jeopardy, right. but not Jones. Jones. That's right. Including Fun Home Joan. Yeah. I'm Which changing my Dean major. Dean Pasquale didn't know that. 
that's a Mouse real was right a thing. <laughs> I know, right? There you go. Look out for that. And last but not least, congratulations to all of us because it's the last opening of the season. Yeah, we did so, it. well, we have one, what, in a month we have Boys in the Band. That's going to be the first opening. But tonight yeah, right. <laughs> is the final opening of the 2017 2018 Broadway season, and it is called The Iceman Cometh, the longest show of the year, save for well, the end. In one part. In one part. Okay. We have a lot of two parters this <laughs> one year. One part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so Denzel Washington, welcome back to Broadway. Uh, congratulations to David Morse getting a lot of uh, award nomination. nomination. Got a dramatist mm -hmm. nomination. He's in a featured role. Uh, it's a huge cast. Huge. Fantastic. George Kenny C. Blanchard. Wolf. Lots of good people. Bill Irwin. Uh, amazing cast. I can't list everybody. Uh, anyway, yeah. they open tonight. And you, there's a squigs up on the site. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that there. Good stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, so it's the final season, and then Tuesday morning, of course, is Tony nominations. Everyone gets up early. But did I mention what you can do on Saturday? You know what? Why don't you tell us one more time? <laughs> because that is more important your own than the favorites for the Broadway.com. Audience Choice Award, including fun categories like replacements, Diva, Diva favorite funny, song, funny. favorite funny performance. Yeah, fun categories. Anyway, I'm going to go make those lists. I'm going to go work yeah, on that. Yeah, why don't you list. go work on that? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Caitlin, will you tell us about Zachary Pizer, please? I would love to. Zachary Noah Pizer is currently playing Tobias Rag in Off Broadway's popular production of Sweeney Todd. He was most recently seen as Bach in the Broadway production of Wicked. And Off Broadway and regional work includes Mad Libs Live at New World Stages, Godspell, and The Fantastics. He has performed in various venues throughout NYC, including Feinstein's 54 Below, Mergen Concert Hall, Musical Theater Factory, LCT, The Cell, Green Room 42, all of the places that you go to constantly. He graduated from Northwestern University just a few years ago, and you can follow him everywhere at Zach underscore Pizer. Please welcome Zach and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Hello, Zach. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How the are pride you? of Piedmont. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's talk because I just bumped into Zach on the subway you and did. I feel like I interviewed you between Christopher Street and 42nd Street, but we're going to replay that now. How are you doing? I'm so good. You are? Mm -hmm. How's it going down there at the pie shop? It's so fun. It is very, very different from any experience I've ever had. Um, it's a little bit different than Wicked. Just a little bit different from Wicked. Um, <laughs> but it's so cool. I mean, it's so it's such a thrilling experience to do like an immersive piece. I've never done one before. And I have learned a lot. Go on. Uh, I want to hear. Because you, this is a very tight space. People are sitting at tables. I'm sure you know this already. But you're really in with your audience. Yes. So we are in a actual pie shop. It's site specific. Um, it started in Tooting, London. I didn't know that was a place. Is that Tooting. how you say it? Tooting. Oh, oh. God, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> you can ask your castmates. I don't Thank know. you. <laughs> um, it started there, uh, and our director and a producer walked by this pie shop, Harrigan's Pie Shop, and they were like, whoa, what if we did like Sweeney Todd there? What a creepy and then, thought. Right, kind of creepy. <laughs> and so they did it. They did a a full production there, and it was an active pie shop during the day, and then they did the show at night. A real like meat pie shop, like the like the show, like real, not like pies, like waitress. I no, just like wanna, real I wanna pies. Make sure people know. Yeah, and then it was super fun. It was like for a small audience of like thirty, and then uh, Cameron McIntosh and Sondheim saw, and they said, "Oh, this is awesome." They brought it to the West End, and they brought it here. So we have re recreated Harrigan's Pie Shop to uh, like a T, like everything we saw photos of the actual pie shop and like the marks on the ground. Oh, are wow. Similar. It's very wow. cool to like the signs and everything and the seating. It's like hand lettering, right? Yeah, exactly. It is all painted. It's so fancy. <laughs> um, and so it's a pie shop and it is very small and intimate. Uh, it smells like pie when you walk in because the former White House pastry chef, Bill Yossis. Oh, look at you uh, with is, the names. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I did my research. <laughs> uh, and he makes pies for people who come like an hour before. And right, you can eat. Delicious pies. And he makes, he gives you like a scoop of garlic, truffle, mash, something you like that. That is else. just, it's, amazing. it's so good. I've How had so much How often do you eat it. these? <clears throat> a lot. <laughs> a lot. I eat them Like a before lot. the show? Uh, during? We, we don't need to talk about that. Like during the show, you know, this while I'm pie. on stage, I'm maybe still digesting parts of the pies. They're just so good. You can't let them go. When you we said all... immersive, you meant immersive. Uh, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if I burp on you, that's part of the experience. Ooh. Mm. Thank you. So it, we are very up close and personal. You know, the we have a stage area, but the entire... Um, 
like pie shop is our playground. You yeah, know, we go on the tables, we go around the tables, we go to the back of the house, we go to the balcony, um, and it really, it's really cool. They get in your face. We get right in your face. We get up close That's and a personal. scary. Now, okay, I want to tell you something weird. Okay, okay. So first of all, I've interviewed you a couple of times before, and I had a blast doing it. And the last time you were on Live at Five, I just watched it again because I was like, I don't want to ask him the same questions. Do you know what I said to you? What did you say? I'm going to bring, oh, bring up the thing. I do know <laughs> what you said because I was going to bring it up. You okay. brought up Sweeney Todd. I did. So Zach in high school, we're going to hold hands. Zach oh, in high school. Sweaty. Was, you know, sweaty. <laughs> Zach in high school did some bird calling. And oh I God. like to bring this up as often as possible because it's amazing. <laughs> Irish red bill chuff. What? I do my research. Now... <laughs> So I was bringing it up, and I said to him in that interview, what did I say? I said, even if I interview you in 40 years when you're doing Sweeney Todd, I'm still going to bring up the bird calling. And then he went into Sweeney Todd. So if there's anything, so else, there anything else you right want to say. I know, if there's anything else that you want to just like throw out there, maybe some you know, yeah. other shows, that'd be great. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, it's so much fun. That's amazing. It's very cool, and it's, I mean, it, it's so, it, I feel like the show, doing the show, it's kind of, like the stuff of what my high school theater dreams were made of. Do you like? Do you know what I mean by that? Like, mm -hmm. like doing the show in a totally new way. Like, yeah, like, like in high something? school, I feel like when I was first um, having a love for theater, I had this idea of what theater could be, and right. especially in New York City, that it could be. You know, There's no one bored on their phone at this. Week Definitely not. Everyone and if is you riveted. are, we get in your face, especially you. <laughs> I'm like, hello, <laughs> look at us. Yeah. No, but it's it's like you know, it's groundbreaking and it's. You bleed for it. Like I, have, I wake up with random cuts on my body from. You make it sounds what. kind of violent. Well, I mean, it is it a is violent show. Todd. <laughs> um, but it's super rewarding too. So it, it really feels like such a treat, and I'm so grateful. Do you think everything should be kind of location immersive like this? No, no. I don't think so. First of all, it's not possible. No, but I don't think so. Not because everything. Because you could also do it in a barbershop. We, you could, you could, you could. I think some shows really benefit from it. I think, especially for this think show, this would. But it no, does. Right? It works. Yes, and I, I've been thinking about like why is it so cool and why does it work so well for this piece? And I think it's because you know Sweeney Todd. When you think of the show, I feel like the first thing that comes to my mind is like blood and like gore and there's and a big orchestra. And everyone's dying, right? <laughs> and so sometimes sell that it, can, sell it, Zach. <laughs> everyone's dying. Sometimes everyone dies. <laughs> sometimes it can overshadow. Not everyone. Sometimes it can overshadow parts of the show that are so beautiful. So for this production, because we are you know, this close yeah. to everyone, and we feel what the audience feels, and the audience feels what we feel, I feel like you get a dose of the humanity and the relatability of the characters that you don't necessarily yeah. get in a um, production where you're separated by, you know, a 24-piece orchestra. Well, when I saw it, I actually had Mr. Todd get right oh, in my were face. Were you in the move seat? I don't know. Maybe she was. But I don't know, I don't know what that means. But <laughs> oh, okay. I will say that I definitely... My my so. yeah, my heart started beating, and yep. that doesn't necessarily happen if you're watching it on a proscenium. No, definitely not. But yeah, when when someone's at you, your your face with a and knife, they're a murderer. Yeah, you know that could happen. Um, I know we have a lot of questions for you. Me too. Oh, okay. Not only are you in Sweeney Todd, but you were in The Wicked. What's that? I don't know. Never it's heard just a of little it. show in a pie shop somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> little. Can you imagine Wicked in a pie shop? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> or like in a little. I don't know what Wicked would be in. It would be a field. It, it would be field. in a piece of cotton candy. That's what it would Aww. be. That's beautiful. That Thank was beautiful. You. Thank you. <laughs> so let's take some questions from our Facebook Live watchers and listeners. All right. Speaking of Wicked, because mm. we know you love I it. Feeling. George mm. is asking um, if you could dream cast the film adaptation of Wicked. Whoever you want. It can be you. It can be your best friends. It can be anyone you want. Wow. Wow. All right, I'm going to put this toward you, for you. Yeah, please. Let's just pretend like it's an animated feature so anybody could be in it. Animated feature. Okay. Um, or uh, you could, or it could be live action. I mean, I'm not trying to. Yeah. a great question. Who would I want to play um, Alphaba? I don't know. Who would you want to play Alphaba? No, this isn't a question for me. Okay. I wasn't um, in with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I feel like I would want to see some people that I wouldn't expect. To yeah. the role, not necessarily like, like a Broadway brand name. People? Maybe Broadway people, maybe less known people. Oh, um, that's a good idea. In some of, but then of course you got to have the features where you know Madame Morrill's got Madame Morrill's got to be someone. I don't know, like Sigourney Weaver. That would be Ooh. amazing. That would be beautiful. Um, okay, I, I'm, I'm down. I, I and can like see I will makeup. be in the movie too. You know, just in case if you want. If you need a Munchkin, Munchkin for sale. Yes. I'm here. 
Um, I'm available. I'm available at all times. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, Brian has a hot take. Zach is an incredible Toby. I sat in the very front row and he was singing to my face. Literally such an amazing experience. I will never forget it. Um, and George also That's asked me, do you have any dream roles? I feel like we get this a lot, but we can't wait to hear them. Yeah. What yeah. do you want me to say? So it comes true. <laughs> As well, your what Oracle. do you want to say when you see me? I want to say hi. I love you. Um, I don't know what you should do. You've got, a, I mean, you have a wonderful range. So you, know, you tell I, me. I think that, and this is what I always say, there are so many amazing shows that are on Broadway right now that I would love to be a part of, but I think my dream um, always has been and will be to originate. Okay, a then new name role. a composer. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to do this, oh. we can't just say an original musical. That, that's not going to happen. That's, oh, too, that's too general. Well, you know, if, you know, Sondheim or Schwartz want to just write a musical and I can be in it, that's great. Steve um, and Steve. <laughs> Steve. Hey, Steve. This is for you. The Steve. I met Steve Sondheim. He came to the show and that he was did. crazy. He Tell me how that show. was. Did you get in his face? No, I did not because he told us that he did not want to be very, very oh. close up, which, okay. you know, makes sense. That's fair. Um, but no, that was a wild experience. It's something that I will never forget. It what was, did he say to the cast? He was so sweet. He said, you know, um, he's a man of few words. And I think he said something like, this has been... Because he saw it, you know, both in Tooting, if I'm pronouncing that right, <laughs> and um, in the West End, and was one of the main reasons why I came here. And he, I th he said something like, "This has been such an amazing experience, and thank you." And having Sondheim say that to you, all of the dreams came true in like one second. I was like, Aww. "All right, cool, that's great, awesome, peaked, done, great, <laughs> you're done, thank you, you're cooked." <laughs> And did you get a picture? You know, he did, he's not a big picture person, but I did have a friend take a photo of me while I was talking with him so you can see my back and his face. Oh, okay. There Does you that go. count? I hope he looked happy. That counts. My back looks very happy. I'm sure your back looks amazing. <laughs> and super excited. <laughs> All right, I want to know this. What is it like to um, start, because you kind of start the second act. Like, what is it like being in that kind of forcing people into... Yeah, like you know, so space. it's really, <laughs> it's really funny, you know, all the, the, in our production, all of the cast members except for Sweeney and Lovett um, and myself go out into the audience right before the second act begins. So it, it, it kind of like warms them up and gets them ready back for that immersive experience so they don't forget what they were doing because it's easy, you know, when you have a 15 minute break, you're like, oh, what a great show. And then you, to go right back into that and be like, oh God, they're in my face might be a lot. Yeah. So I get to go out and kind of rev them up once everyone else has been kind of schmoozed with a little bit. So it's really fun. It's, it's, I get to make direct eye contact, you know, like when my family and friends come, I get to look them straight in the eye and sing them the top of the Do you break ever? Back to, um, no, because I'm a professional. I knew that. I knew you were a professional. <laughs> um, Never. But, <laughs> always. Mm -hmm. No, it's, um, it, it's super fun. It can be super scary, but I, I think it's a really fun task that Toby gets to have as kind of the person who's almost like the MC, especially at the top of the second oh, yeah, act mm -hmm. to bring you right back in. Um, and once... <laughs> I get to do a little bit of like stand up, not actual stand up, but I just really? get to warm them up a little bit to make them laugh, hopefully. <laughs> well, sometimes I don't laugh, so <laughs> that might show you how good at stand up I am. You're but great um at it. but it's it's very fun. All right, before we go, because we have to go very soon, for the people who have never seen me interview Zachary Noah Pizer or who are just listening to the podcast of this. Um, we have to explain the bird calling. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, we yes. do. We just do because it's okay. And I'll say it again. If uh, you have a special skill and you put it on your resume and you put your resume on the internet, I will find it. She digs. Go on. She, she, so she did you, her research. The first time that I met Beth, we were doing, <laughs> oh boy, I did. Um, the first time I met Beth, <laughs> we were doing Fresh Face. Was that two years ago? It was two or three and years ago, yeah. Pretty much the first thing she said before, she was like, are you comfortable bird calling on this camera? <laughs> and I was like, um, I, yeah, sure, so I you, guess. But you so, were a bird caller, serious one. Yeah, so in my hometown, Piedmont, California, had a national bird calling contest um, where they would have kids uh, write a script, a little skit together, and then they choose a bird, and then they do the call at the end, and then we would be judged by folks, and then they would, the winners would go on the David Letterman show. Um, you know, normal. Which is very, casual. it was <laughs> very cool. It was, uh, it was one of some of my favorite memories from high school coming to New York City. And of course, now that I've lived here for a couple of years, it's like, oh, I, this is like, this is where I was. And I was, <laughs> but at the time I was like, whoa, New York City, which I still get sometimes. But it's, uh, so we would, we bird called. I, I bird called with some friends on the David Letterman show. Both and my on junior your Fresh Face And video. senior year, and <laughs> on my Fresh Face video, and on my Live at Five. 
last time. Last time. So I just want to say this. I'm not going to make you do it now. Unless what? you want to. Oh, no. We're so good. But I am so... <laughs> I'm not going to make you, but I will say this. In 10 years, when you're in that hit Stephen Schwartz, Stephen Sondheim musical, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make you come back and do the Irish Red Bill Chuff. Did I say it correctly? Irish Red Bill Chuff. Chuff. Just like me tooting. You know, we just kind of... Yeah, it's like that. Guess. Are you sure you don't want to break a little bit? You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Do you want to do a little? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think, you know, that that should suffice <laughs> for now. But, um. Ladies and gentlemen, the way you get to Broadway, the way you get to be in a hit off-Broadway Sondheim iconic musical is you join your bird calling club in high school. Yes. That is the path? For sure the way. <laughs> no other way. Words. Don't, no, forget about training. <laughs> don't get a voice teacher. No, Just no, no. I mean, you can do straight. those things. But the main way you got recognized by me, or David Letterman, or whatever. <laughs> this is, because we're on the same level, is. You are. Yeah, we are. Anyway, it's that. You're welcome. Caitlin. Are you taking me out? out? Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's take us out. Thanks. Thank you all so much for watching Live at Five today. You can listen to this interview, as well as all of ours from this past week, on our Live at Five podcast. You can find it on Apple, you can find it on Google Play, wherever you listen to, po to your podcast. And join us tomorrow, as we are joined by Mean Girl star Barrett Wilbur weed. So get ready. Have a good night, everyone.